future of America. Well, we're going to talk about a subject that is going to be of great interest to many of you. And I believe for others who may not think it's interesting, as you listen, I believe that it will be. Our guest today is Charles Mizrahi. He is an observant Jew, and he was wildly successful on Wall Street in the stock market and commodities trading. In fact, he was ranked as the number one performing market timer, not just on Wall Street, but in the entire United States. And he was ranked as the number one commodity trading advisor. He's got over 37 years of experience in recommending stocks, and he's talking today about biblical capitalism as opposed to socialism. Mm -hmm. How timely is that? Join Joni me as we welcome Charles Misrahi. Charles, come on over and join us. Great to have you, sir. Oh, yeah, thank you. Now, since you're Jewish, this will be so fun. Let's show a live camera shot from Daystar's Jerusalem studio. There we see the city of Jerusalem. And the Bible says we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And the Lord said he would bless those that bless Israel and bless the Jewish people. So for those, especially since most of our, we're going live into Israel, by, by the way, right now. So you're going to be seen in all the homes in Israel. So for those other than that are Jewish, for our Christian audience, what is an observant Jew? Well, that's uh, basically someone who uh, follows the Torah and the rabbinic laws and rabbinic teachings uh, to almost the letter of the law. All right, so when we talk about socialism, that really is almost the code name for communism. And uh, Charles, has it ever worked anywhere in the world, socialism? Not that I know of, and I don't think it could ever work. It, it goes against human nature, that I should work my field, my business, and give to those who don't work because of what? And secondly, the government should decide what is fair and what I should have and what others should have. Where has that ever worked? And the Bible has a lot to say about this subject. So this is not just coming from your Wall Street days. This is coming from your study of, of the Bible. Is that right? Yeah, well, um, so this summer, uh, and I live in New York, and I was seeing the terrible things that were going on in New York with, uh, with destroying property and marches in the street and violence. And here you had a whole bunch of millennials. Well, I shouldn't say millennials. It was a lot of people basically calling for socialism. And I just, I just didn't get it. So uh, what I did was is I just looked to the Bible, and uh, there we see that wealth is a blessing. It's not a curse. Yeah. You know, the Lord blessed Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King Solomon with wealth. And it's not wealth for wealth's sake. It's wealth for what one does with that and help, help society. So one of the reasons God wants to bless people with wealth, not only take care of their family, but is to be generous. And those that are not generous, then they're not following what the Word of God says to do with the blessing that comes their way. Is that right? Right. We're stewards of capital. It's not our capital. I've been to, unfortunately, a lot of funerals and a lot of cemeteries. I haven't seen anyone take their money with them. So you work your whole life in order to accumulate, and what is it worth, right, at the end of days? So the point being is that uh, wealth is there to help society. And uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the five books of Moses, it, it talks specifically about helping the underbelly of society. In Deuteronomy 15, 11, for example, it talks about there will always be poor in the land. It's your responsibility to help your fellow Israelite. And the Bible has laws in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, not cutting the corners of your field, leaving them to the poor, uh, not picking up all the gleanings when, they're, when the reaper is reaping, that's left for the poor. For example, the book of Ruth. Yeah. Ruth is in Boaz's field collecting those gleanings. That's right. And it's also with grapes, it's with <laughs> olives. There's also the seven-year seven year, uh, cycle, the sabbatical year where the land la uh, lays fallow, and that is for anyone to come. So we think we're trustees and we own our wealth. We don't. Our wealth is there uh, in order to help make this world a better place. Excellent. Well, ultimately, we, we believe everything that we have belongs to God. That's right. Um, but so... 
What about this narrative of, of socialism that you're hearing proclaimed through so many politicians today? How dangerous is that based on the knowledge of what you do in the secular community and secular world? Well, look, uh, our country is the greatest country ever on the face of the earth. Yes. We're the only country also that is founded on Judeo-Christian values. Our founding fathers knew what they were doing, and that's what makes us so unique. People are trying to come into our country, uh, climbing over walls, uh, digging under walls, coming on rowboats, just coming to this country. Where else in the world does that happen? Yeah. They're coming here for a reason, because America represents freedom and opportunity. So socialism, where does that even play in? That takes away freedom from people and opportunity from everyone. Why, why did my grandparents come here over 100 years ago on the bottom of a ship in steerage because of the welfare state that we had? We didn't have welfare until the 1930s. They came in the 20s. They came here because America was the land of opportunity. So once we even think that socialism or any type of government intervention into how we control our lives and what we do with our money uh, ever comes into play, first of all, it's alien to our way of thinking, and that's not what makes us American. You know, Joni and I were both raised in Christian businessmen's homes. And my dad taught me to work hard and the value of a dollar. And uh, I paid for my car, first car. Joni had to pay for her first car. Mm -hmm. And I had to pay my way through college, even though my dad was a prosperous man. I wasn't real thrilled about it at the time, but now because of what I have to do as a minister slash businessman, I am very appreciative for all of those lessons that I learned from that. Joni? You know, I was thinking, you mentioned about uh, being dismayed there in New York when you begin to see all the rioting, and you look at like downtown New York City, and it's a travesty what has happened. But I'm, I was thinking, Marcus and I were talking about this, if we could send not just millennials, but those who are protesting to socialist-run countries for about a year, they would change their mind. A year, I give them about a week. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, you know what's, it was, what I found so interesting about this is that most of the people who were documenting these riots and these ma and mass disturbance and calling for socialism were taking out their iPhones. <laughs> the iPhone wasn't created by a government-run agency. It was created by an entrepreneur in uh, a country which had everything or has everything to offer that uh, a young man could start a business. Uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, 1996, starts Amazon and today employs one million people. Amazing. One guy and he's worth over a hundred billion dollars. So where else do you have this kind of opportunity? Where, where else do you have this? You know, there, socialism, the reason so many young people are buying into it is because they're being offered free college, free medicine and free money. You know, if you just think about it for a second, man, that sounds great, but where's the hard work? Where's the fairness? Where's the equity? All right, we've only got just a moment. So Charles, what can people who are watching today, they're thinking, well, what should I do with my money? What is a good investment and also a, a safe investment? Because sometimes the higher uh, return, the higher the risk. So we want to be uh, careful with our, especially for our older audience, what would you say to them? Well, the best wealth creator ever is the stock market. You could be partners with any business. By owning a, a share, that's basically owning a piece of a business. So you could be partners with any great business you want. And what I do now is I created a, a newsletter, Alpha Investor, which is basically trying to help Main Street Americans get a piece of that prosperity by directing them and uh, teaching them about the market and how to invest. So I have a site, uh, alphainvestornow.com, which people there it is go on to, the screen, and they can learn about what I do. I produce a newsletter, which is which is the price of a cup of coffee a month. It's keep it very low, because uh, I just think back. Uh, growing up in a very working class family, my father's a warehouse manager. How if someone would have told him back in the day how to invest, how my life and my family's life would have been so much different than it is today. You know, I just want to say this to our, our Daystar partners. I've never told you this before, but four times this year when I was praying, I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, tell our business manager to invest this amount of money in the stock market. And we didn't lose money on any of those. And then he also then told me later when to, to sell. And I'm here to tell you to the glory of God, because I'm not trained in this area, 
but Daystar made almost $4 million profit with four uh, stock uh, transactions. Okay. So there's definitely ways out there, but you need to be informed. You can't just do it on a whim because uh, your next door neighbor gave you a stock tip. These people like Charles that have a track record, a sterling track record and decades of success, those really are the kind of people that you should be listening to when it comes well, to stock market. Well, and you know, I, I appreciate the fact that you have a business anointing as well as a ministry anointing. You don't find that combination of kingly and priestly anointing. And uh, I'm sure that's what you have as well, a kingly anoint, anointing in that you can help people uh, succeed and help people be blessed. That's really your goal, isn't it? Well, my goal is, yeah, it, that, you know, look, every day we wake up, prayer is to go to sleep at night, making the world slightly better. It doesn't have to be a lot. 1% better over a couple of hundred days makes the world a whole lot better. So if uh, people have uh, more, they can give more, they can help others, they can help people exactly. that they see. So uh, remember, it's people with wealth who hire other people. <laughs> it's, it's people with wealth who give. And, and that's what we need more of. We need more of people who are taking uh, the responsibility of their own financial future and to continue on and making the world a better place. And I just want to quickly add, because some people don't understand the stock market and understand that. That's why you need to get his newsletter. But if, if that scares you away, another great investment is real estate. You know why it is? I told Joni this several times. God, there's one thing God is not doing. He's not making any more land but he certainly is making a lot more people. And if you don't know how to invest in real estate, invest in yourself through real estate. If you've got a loan and you're paying four, five, six percent interest, well, one thing you could do is refinance, get a lower interest rate. The other thing you can do is start paying extra every month and pay that mortgage off. Joni and I did that and we paid off our house in like 14 years instead of 30 that years is, yeah. and just save thousands of dollars. So that's just being uh, extra disciplined and saying, you know what, we're gonna not go out to eat one time a week. Uh, we're gonna cut out one of the times we go out and we're gonna apply that towards the mortgage. And you know, you're only getting what a, qu a quarter of a percent or, or maybe one tenth of a percent in a CD right now with a bank. Well, if you're gonna pay uh, down four or 5% mortgage rates, and man, that's how much money you're making. So it, it's tremendous. Plus, you save on the compounded interest as well. All right. So there are a lot of people that are nervous about the stock market right now. And so what would you say to them uh, as far as using wisdom and in investing in it right now? Yeah, let me add to that because since we're at a all-time high, relatively speaking, are, should people still invest in the stock market of thinking, well, it can only go down? Or what do you say about that? Well, you're not really investing in the stock market, right? You're investing in a stock. A stock is a piece of a company. Simplest and easiest thing to do is find a company that you know pretty well. Buy some shares and hold them not for the next week or month, but for the next five and ten years. Uh, the stock market is a place where you don't have to do anything. Just find a, a good company that earnings will be material higher over, materially higher over the next five years and ten years, and just sit back and reap the rewards, not to trade in and out. I like, I like the Walmart thing because everybody likes to go to Walmart and save money. They, because of volume, they can offer their products at lower prices than anybody else. They're going to be in business. Even when COVID's going on and they're shutting down churches and synagogues, you can go to Walmart. Mm -hmm. So, hey, that's, right. that's a good <laughs> piece of advice and invest long term. Charles, thank you so much oh, for sharing you. today. We love hearing from you. And I, we're so delighted to share this with you today to one, to counteract the terrible message of socialism that many left wing uh, politicians are trying to push in America and in other countries that watch Daystar and to give you ideas on how you can better yourself financially and get out from under some of the financial pressure. All right, Joni. Tell me a little bit about Jamie, because you were telling me that this is not just some ordinary 